As Alexei Ivanovich cautiously approached the scene, his senses heightened, and his heart raced with a mix of fear and curiosity. The dense forest seemed to hold its breath as he stepped closer to the majestic yet unexpected sight before him. The tigress, with her sides heaving heavily in the crisp winter air, lay motionless against the blanket of snow. Her fur, a striking contrast against the white backdrop, bore the scars of an unseen struggle, telling a silent story of survival in the unforgiving wilderness. Alexei Ivanovich couldn't help but marvel at the sheer presence of the magnificent creature, her powerful form exuding both strength and vulnerability. It was a sight that stirred a sense of awe and reverence within him, tinged with a deep respect for the wild beauty of the forest. Yet, mingled with his admiration was a growing sense of urgency as he realized the dire situation unfolding before him. The tigress, a rare visitor to these lands, was clearly in distress, her labored breaths signaling that time was of the essence. When he moved closer, Alexei Ivanovich's gaze swept the surroundings, searching for clues as to what had led the tigress to this remote corner of the forest. Was she injured? Lost? Or perhaps something more sinister lurked in the shadows, unseen but felt in the stillness of the air. With each step, the old forester felt a mixture of trepidation and determination coursing through his veins. Whatever the cause of the tigress's plight, he knew he couldn't stand idly by. It was a moment that called for action, for courage in the face of uncertainty, and for compassion towards a creature in need. The experienced forester had come to understand the reason behind the wolf's persistent howling in the area. It was a sign that something was amiss. The stillness of the cat upon his arrival only deepened his concern, prompting him to investigate further. As he approached and attempted to examine the creature more closely, the truth of the situation became heartbreakingly clear. He discovered a tigress, heavily pregnant and on the verge of giving birth. However, her choice of location for this significant event puzzled him. Where was her safe haven, her den? His question was soon answered as he cleared away the surrounding snow, uncovering a harrowing sight. The majestic tigress was ensnared in a massive, cruel trap. This discovery left the forester in shock, reeling from the realization of his oversight. Despite his frequent patrols in the area, this trap had escaped his notice. He couldn't help but wonder about the ruthless individual who had set such a malicious snare. Time was of the essence, and the forester knew immediate action was required. But, before he could intervene, the situation took a turn for the worse. The tigress let out a final breath, her life slipping away as her body ceased its struggle. Overcome with grief and regret, Alexei Ivanovich, the forester, was reduced to tears. He berated himself for ignoring the wolf's calls for help, which he had dismissed as background noise over the past three nights. In a twist of fate, the forester realized the wolf had not been seeking his aid after all. Instead, it had summoned its pack, having stumbled upon the vulnerable tigress and seeing an opportunity for a meal. The arrival of additional wolves, more aggressive than the first, signaled their claim over the tigress. However, Alexei Ivanovich noticed a faint movement from within the deceased tigress. Miraculously, there was still life within her, a tiger cub fighting for survival. Acting with decisive urgency, Alexei Ivanovich fired his gun into the air, scattering the wolves into the surrounding forest. With no time to spare, he drew his knife, prepared to do whatever was necessary to save the unborn cub. In this moment of crisis, the forester was determined to rectify his earlier inaction and give the innocent cub a fighting chance at life. In a cozy corner by the stove, nestled within a basket, two tiny tiger cubs found warmth and shelter. They brought additional concerns to the old man's life, yet they also promised companionship for the New Year's celebrations. With the arrival of spring, Alexei Ivanovich made his way back to the tragic site where he had found their mother, a tigress, breathing her last. Although the forest's custodians had done their part, a remnant of the past, a trap, lingered on, exactly what the forester had anticipated. This trap, a relic from a bygone era, bore a number, a practice reminiscent of how firearms were once catalogued. The old man mounted this trap on a wall behind his house, pondering over its origins and the dilemma of confronting its owner, who could easily deny ownership or claim theft. The joy the forester found in his unique companions was tinged with the knowledge that their innocent days were numbered. Once they matured into majestic but formidable predators, the playful interactions would cease. 
Intriguingly, the cubs displayed a deep-seated aversion to traps, growling and fluffing up their fur at the sight, as if sensing the pain and loss inflicted by such devices on their mother. Word of the forester's exotic housemate spread like wildfire through the village, eventually reaching the ears of the board's chairman, a man of dubious repute and a past shadowed by allegations of corruption. His interest in the tiger cubs wasn't driven by affection but by greed, seeing them as lucrative assets in the black market. Despite his persistent and tempting offers, Alexei Ivanovich stood firm, refusing to part with the cubs. The situation escalated when the chairman, undeterred by the forester's refusal, sent menacing figures to his doorstep with threats of violence. These thugs, however, were woefully unprepared for the reality of facing not docile kittens but young tigers, already displaying the formidable size and strength of their species. As these intruders fled in terror, the tiger cub's instincts surged to the forefront, marking a poignant moment where the natural world clashed with human greed and malice. For an extended period, they pursued the unwelcome visitors deep within the woods. As they sensed their own resilience and determination growing, the young ones started to vanish into the forest with increasing frequency. The taiga is my home, from which there is no escape, they seemed to understand. Then, an unusual event unfolded. During a time when the chairman of the board was away from his residence, an intruder, or perhaps several, stealthily entered his property. They wreaked havoc, leaving a trail of destruction in their wake, and astonishingly, no one detected their presence during the act. Upon investigation, specialists concluded that the culprits were not humans but wild animals, suggesting the involvement of more than one creature. Subsequently, Alexei Ivanovich found himself entangled in a peculiar situation when he managed to trace a trap back to its owner, who was none other than the chairman himself. The tigers, recognizing him by his scent, sought vengeance for the demise of their mother. Devastated by the loss of his possessions acquired through dubious means, the chairman eventually abandoned the area. The tiger siblings were never spotted again, and they ceased their raids on the local farms. Meanwhile, the forester's patrols became increasingly infrequent. His health was deteriorating, yet whenever he ventured into the forest, he would invariably encounter the watchful gazes of the striped beings from behind the foliage, silently acknowledging their guardian. After watching this story, what do you think of? Then there is an another story about Tiger. Let's expect what will happen. Tigers are often feared for their ferocity, seen as embodiments of danger and ruthlessness. Yet, the diminutive tiger cub discovered by Atwood in the dense woods was an exception, posing no threat to anyone due to its grievous injuries. As time passed, Atwood believed the tiger had erased any memory of him, but their unexpected reunion left him astounded, challenging his beliefs about the nature of wild animals. Atwood, a man of modest means and solitary by nature, resided in a mountainous village. Although formal education had eluded him, he was recognized for his intelligence, compassion, and resilience. When the opportunity to become a forest ranger was presented, he embraced it without a second thought. The role seemed tailor-made for him, given his lifelong familiarity with the mountainous terrain and his innate connection to the natural world. Every other day, Atwood would patrol the forest, meticulously recording his observations for the ranger team, contributing to their collective knowledge and conservation efforts. One frosty winter day, while navigating through a particularly snow-laden section of the forest, Atwood's life took a dramatic turn. The heavy snowfall had transformed the familiar landscape into a foreign blanket of white, making his patrol physically taxing. During one of his brief rests, a soft whining caught his attention. Initially dismissing it as a trick of his mind, he was drawn to investigate when the sound persisted. Carefully tracing its source, he discovered a tiger cub partially buried in the snow, its pitiful cries piercing the cold silence. Upon closer inspection, Atwood realized the cub was in dire straits, with visible bite wounds and a likely fractured leg. His instincts as a ranger and a compassionate human kicked in. He gently lifted the cub, cradling it against his chest for warmth, and hurried back to his village home. There, he fashioned a makeshift bed from old garments and used his knowledge of medicinal herbs to treat the cub's injuries, improvising a splint for its leg from garden sticks. Despite the cub's initial discomfort, it allowed Atwood to tend to its wounds. When evening approached, concern for the cub's nourishment occupied Atwood's thoughts. Remembering his dog's recent litter, 
he realized the solution lay in the fresh milk she could provide. This act of kindness marked the beginning of an extraordinary bond between man and tiger, one that would defy conventional wisdom about the nature of wild animals and their capacity for memory and gratitude. In a remarkable display of compassion and determination, Atwood managed to collect some milk and carefully brought it back to the small, vulnerable tiger cub. He hoped earnestly that this modest offering would be enough to sustain the creature through the night. Despite its evident exhaustion and discomfort, the cub showed a flicker of interest in the nourishment Atwood presented. Gently, Atwood brought the bowl to the cub's lips, and with tentative licks, it began to consume the milk. This small act of acceptance was a positive sign to Atwood, a desire for food often indicates a will to live, sparking a glimmer of hope that the cub might persevere. With unwavering dedication, Atwood committed his days to nurturing the young tiger. He consistently fed it the dog's milk, and, day by day, the cub grew in strength and size. Over time, its wounds began to mend, though it was left with a conspicuous scar along its leg. Recognizing the deep bond that had formed, Atwood affectionately named the tiger gore. Within six months, the once fragile cub had transformed into a regal tiger. Gore would often join Atwood on his patrols through the mountains, exhibiting playful behavior reminiscent of a domestic cat. Despite this, Atwood noted that Gore's demeanor was not typical for a wild tiger. Faced with a tough decision, Atwood resolved that for Gore's well-being, he must release him back into the wild. On the mountain, as he bid farewell and started to depart, Gore followed him, unwilling to part from his human companion. In a desperate attempt to encourage Gore to stay in his natural habitat, Atwood resorted to yelling and shouting. This unprecedented show of anger scared Gore, who then retreated into the forest, leaving Atwood to return home with a heavy heart. Although Atwood continued his patrols, Gore was nowhere to be seen. Then, during one routine walk, Atwood's life took a dramatic turn when he collapsed on the trail. He was discovered by a local villager named Bonnie, who was collecting firewood. She assisted Atwood, marking the beginning of an inseparable bond. As their friendship grew, Bonnie confessed her deeper feelings for Atwood, and they soon became a couple. Their relationship blossomed, and Atwood found joy not just in being Bonnie's partner but eventually her husband and the father to their daughter. However, during one of his walks, Atwood experienced a sudden, sharp pain and collapsed once more. Fortunately, Bonnie was there to assist him. After a strenuous journey to the nearest road, a passing vehicle transported them to the hospital. There, doctors discovered that Atwood was facing a dire medical condition, his right kidney was deteriorating, and his left kidney was becoming necrotic. This diagnosis marked the beginning of a challenging period for Atwood, as he remained in the hospital for an extended stay to receive the necessary care. Over the course of several days, he consistently declined the opportunity to undergo a critical surgical procedure that could potentially save his life. His refusal was rooted in the prohibitively high expenses associated with the operation. Despite being aware of its life-preserving capabilities, the financial burden it entailed led him to opt against it. This decision underscores the significant impact that healthcare costs can have on individuals' choices regarding potentially life-saving treatments. Atwood's encounter with Gore during the forest fire was nothing short of miraculous. As the flames closed in around him, he found himself face to face with the tiger he had once rescued as a cub. In that moment of desperation, Atwood had resigned himself to his fate, but Gore's unexpected intervention changed everything. The tiger's instinctual response to protect Atwood, despite their time apart, was a testament to the deep bond they shared. With incredible strength and determination, Gore guided Atwood to safety, risking its own life to ensure that its human friend survived. Atwood's astonishment at Gore's actions was palpable, yet he recognized the familiar scar on the tiger's leg, a reminder of their shared history. In that moment of recognition, Atwood knew that Gore had not forgotten him, just as he had never forgotten the tiger he had nursed back to health years ago. As Gore returned to the mountain, Atwood was filled with a sense of gratitude and awe for the remarkable creature that had saved his life once again. Though their time together was fleeting, Atwood was certain that the bond between them would endure, a testament to the enduring power of friendship and loyalty. As Atwood recounted his incredible tale to Bonnie, he knew that their lives had been forever changed by the extraordinary bond between man and beast.
And though Gore had returned to the wild, Atwood was comforted by the knowledge that their paths would cross again someday, for their connection was truly one of a kind. After watching this story, how do you feel? Then there is an another story about Tiger. Let's continue. Luca stood by the window, watching intently as the rescue team worked swiftly and efficiently to attend to the injured Tiger. He could hear the muffled voices of the rescue workers as they communicated with each other, their words drowned out by the pounding of his heart. Despite the bitter cold seeping through the window pane, Luca felt a sheen of sweat forming on his brow. He had never been this close to a tiger before, let alone a wounded one. The sheer magnitude of the situation left him feeling both awestruck and terrified. Outside, the tiger lay still on the stretcher, its massive form shrouded in blankets to keep it warm. Luca couldn't help but marvel at the sheer size and power of the animal, even in its weakened state. Its fur, once a majestic coat of golden stripes, now appeared dull and matted with dirt and snow. As the rescue team carefully loaded the tiger into their vehicle, Luca felt a surge of relief wash over him. He had done his part to help, but now it was in the hands of the professionals. Still, he couldn't shake the feeling of unease that lingered in the pit of his stomach. After the rescue team departed, leaving behind nothing but a trail of tire tracks in the snow, Luca retreated into his home, feeling a mixture of exhaustion and exhilaration. He sank into his favorite armchair, the events of the past hour swirling in his mind like a whirlwind. For days afterward, Luca couldn't shake the memory of the injured tiger lying just outside his door. He found himself haunted by thoughts of what might have happened if he hadn't called for help, or if the rescue team hadn't arrived in time. But amidst the lingering sense of unease, there was also a glimmer of hope. Hope that the tiger would receive the care it so desperately needed, and hope that someday, it would roam the wild once more, strong and free. And as Luca gazed out at the snow-covered landscape, he couldn't help but feel a profound sense of gratitude for the intricate tapestry of life that surrounded him. Luca's heart ached as he remembered that fateful day when he had stumbled upon the tiny tiger cub trapped in the jaws of a hunter's snare. The image of the wounded creature, its fur matted with blood and its eyes wide with fear, was etched into his memory forever. He had acted on instinct, scooping up the cub in his arms and cradling it close to his chest as he rushed back to his home. With trembling hands, he had tended to its injuries as best as he could, cleaning the wounds and wrapping them in bandages. For days and nights, Luca had nursed the cub back to health, his heart heavy with worry and uncertainty. The cub had been so small and fragile, its life hanging in the balance with each passing moment. But despite the odds stacked against them, Luca refused to give up hope. He had poured all of his love and care into the little tiger, willing it to survive against all odds. And now, as he watched the sanctuary workers examine the tiger's injured leg, Luca felt a swell of emotions wash over him. The realization that this majestic creature, now towering and powerful, was the same cub he had rescued years ago filled him with a sense of profound gratitude. When the workers gently lifted the tiger's paw, revealing the scarred flesh beneath, Luca couldn't help but feel a pang of guilt. He wished he could have done more to protect the cub from harm, to shield it from the cruelty of the world. But in that moment, as he stood beside the tiger he had once called Cato, Luca knew that their paths had been destined to cross again. And as he looked into the tiger's eyes, he saw a glimmer of recognition, a silent acknowledgement of the bond that had formed between them. With a heavy heart, Luca watched as the sanctuary workers administered a tranquilizer to the tiger, its powerful form slowly succumbing to sleep. And as he turned to leave, he knew that this was not goodbye, but rather a new beginning for the tiger he had once saved from the brink of death. As days turned into weeks, Luca's bond with the injured tiger cub grew stronger. He named the cub Cato, a symbol of the resilience and strength that the tiny creature displayed in the face of adversity. Despite the odds stacked against them, Luca refused to give up on Cato. He meticulously tended to the cub's wounds, administering medication and cleaning the infected areas with care. Each day brought new challenges, but Luca faced them head-on, determined to give Cato the best chance at survival. As Cato grew stronger, his once lethargic demeanor gave way to a playful and spirited nature. Luca marveled at the cub's resilience, his heart swelling with pride at the progress Cato was making. But just as Luca allowed himself to hope for Cato's recovery, disaster struck. One morning, he found the cub unresponsive in his crate, 
his breathing shallow and his body limp. Panic surged through Luca as he realized the gravity of the situation. There was no time to waste. Drawing on his instincts and first aid training, Luca sprang into action. With trembling hands, he began chest compressions, willing Cato to hold on. Each compression felt like an eternity, the weight of uncertainty pressing down on Luca's shoulders. But then, against all odds, Cato stirred. Slowly, hesitantly, he began to regain consciousness, his amber eyes flickering open. Relief flooded through Luca as he watched the cub's chest rise and fall with renewed strength. With Cato stable once more, Luca wasted no time in seeking medical advice. The vet confirmed his worst fears, Cato had developed a severe infection that threatened his life. But Luca refused to give in to despair. He would do whatever it took to save his beloved companion. Days turned into weeks, and Cato's condition gradually improved. With each passing day, Luca marveled at the cub's resilience, his spirit unbroken despite the challenges he faced. And as their bond deepened, Luca knew that he would do whatever it took to ensure Cato's happiness and well-being. Together, they forged a friendship unlike any other, bound by love, trust, and the unshakable determination to overcome the odds. And as they curled up together each night, Luca knew that he had found a friend for life in the courageous tiger cub he had rescued from the depths of despair. Despite Luca's efforts to care for Cato, the tiger's return brought with it a stark reminder of the harsh realities of the wild. The once majestic creature now stood before Luca, his once vibrant coat marred by signs of struggle and suffering. While the rescue team examined Cato's condition, Luca felt a surge of anguish and guilt wash over him. He had hoped that Cato would thrive in the wild, but it seemed that the harsh realities of survival had taken their toll on the tiger. The sight of Cato's infected teeth filled Luca with a deep sense of sorrow. He knew that the pain and discomfort the tiger must have endured were unimaginable. How could he have let Cato suffer for so long without realizing the extent of his injuries? The rescue team explained the severity of Cato's condition to Luca, their expressions mirroring his own concern. It was clear that immediate intervention was necessary to alleviate Cato's suffering and prevent further complications. Despite the gravity of the situation, Luca felt a glimmer of hope ignite within him. He was determined to do everything in his power to help Cato overcome this latest challenge. The bond they had forged over the years was unbreakable, and Luca would not abandon his friend in his time of need. Together with the rescue team, Luca devised a plan to treat Cato's infected teeth and provide him with the care he desperately needed. It would be a long and arduous journey, but Luca was prepared to stand by Cato's side every step of the way. When they set out to administer treatment to the ailing tiger, Luca silently vowed to never let Cato suffer alone again. Their bond transcended the boundaries of species, uniting them in a shared journey of resilience, compassion, and unwavering friendship. The news of Cato's escape sent waves of concern and anxiety crashing over Luca. He couldn't shake the feeling of responsibility for the tiger's well-being, knowing that he had been the one to initially care for him. As he listened to the explanation from the sanctuary staff, a sense of frustration gnawed at him. How could such a crucial lapse in safety protocols have occurred? The sanctuary staff recounted the sequence of events that led to Cato's escape, highlighting the moment when the inexperienced student ventured too close to the tiger's enclosure. Luca couldn't help but feel a pang of sympathy for the young volunteer, realizing that the situation had spiraled out of control due to a simple mistake. With Cato now roaming free, Luca's mind raced with worry. The tiger was still in need of medical attention, and without proper care, his condition could worsen rapidly. It was a race against time to locate Cato and ensure that he received the treatment he so desperately needed. As Luca absorbed the gravity of the situation, he resolved to do everything in his power to aid in the search for Cato. He contacted the sanctuary to offer his assistance and mobilized a group of volunteers from the local community to join the effort. Together, they combed the surrounding area, scouring the countryside for any sign of the elusive tiger. Every rustle in the bushes, every footprint in the snow, held the potential to lead them closer to Cato's whereabouts. Despite their best efforts, the hours turned into days, and there was still no sign of Cato. With each passing moment, Luca's concern deepened, knowing that time was of the essence in Cato's desperate struggle for survival. Just when it seemed like hope was fading, a breakthrough occurred. 
A farmer reported spotting a large tiger in the vicinity of his property, prompting a flurry of activity as Luca and the search team rushed to the scene. With bated breath, they ventured into the dense undergrowth, following the trail left by the elusive tiger. Their hearts pounded with anticipation as they closed in on their quarry, praying that Cato would be found safe and sound. Then, amidst the tangled foliage, they spotted him. Cato, battered and weary, but alive. Relief flooded through Luca as he approached the tiger, his eyes brimming with tears of gratitude. Despite the ordeal he had endured, Cato remained calm as Luca gently approached him. With trembling hands, Luca administered the much-needed medicine, offering comfort and reassurance to the injured tiger. When they made their way back to the sanctuary, Luca couldn't help but marvel at the resilience and strength of the magnificent creature walking beside him. In Cato's eyes, he saw a reflection of their shared bond, forged through adversity and bound by compassion. Though the journey ahead would be long and challenging, Luca knew that they would face it together, united in their determination to overcome whatever obstacles lay in their path. And as they ventured into the unknown, a glimmer of hope illuminated their path, guiding them towards a future filled with promise and possibility. The rescue team held their breath, hoping against hope that Cato wouldn't inadvertently wander onto farmland or cross paths with unsuspecting humans in an area where farmers strongly disliked predators. The potential danger weighed heavily on their minds as news spread of Cato's escape from the sanctuary. A sense of urgency filled the air, and the rescue team was on high alert, fully aware of the risks involved. They knew that the tiger, weakened by his infection, was now out in the open, miles away from the safety of his territory. The concern grew as they considered the potential encounters with unsuspecting humans or the dangers of venturing onto farmland. With a mixture of anxiety and determination, the team mobilized to search for Cato. They combed through the surrounding areas, setting up traps and deploying trackers to locate any signs of the majestic tiger. Collaborating with local authorities, they spread the word and urged caution among the community. Days turned into nerve-wracking weeks as they tirelessly scoured the countryside, hoping for any breakthrough. The rescue team knew that time was of the essence, for each passing moment brought the risk of Cato succumbing to his untreated infection. Then, one fateful afternoon, a farmer on the outskirts of town reported a sighting. Cato had been spotted nearby, cautiously navigating the unfamiliar terrain. The team swiftly mobilized to the location, armed with tranquilizers and a carefully crafted plan. Approaching with utmost caution, they aimed to ensure the safety of both the tiger and the surrounding community. As they closed in on Cato, their hearts raced, knowing that any sudden movement could trigger a potentially dangerous encounter. But fortune favored them that day. The tranquilizer dart found its mark, and Cato succumbed to its effects, drifting into a deep slumber. The team moved swiftly, securing the majestic creature and transporting him back to the sanctuary. Upon arrival, the sanctuary staff greeted the weary rescue team, ready to resume their efforts in nursing Cato back to full health. The tiger was immediately placed in a secure and spacious enclosure, equipped with all the necessary medical facilities. Days turned into weeks, and under the watchful eyes of dedicated veterinarians and caretakers, Cato made steady progress. His infection was treated, and his strength gradually returned. Finally, the day arrived when Cato was deemed fit for release. The sanctuary staff carefully selected a suitable location, a vast wilderness teeming with life, where he could reclaim his rightful place in the natural world. As Cato disappeared into the wilderness, his massive silhouette blending with the untamed landscape, the sanctuary team felt a profound sense of accomplishment. They knew they had played a crucial role in giving this extraordinary tiger a second chance at life. Well, a third chance actually. This dying tiger was lucky enough, his life was saved twice by caring humans. And as for Luca, the man who had saved Cato the first time all those years ago, he stood among the sanctuary staff, witnessing the majestic tiger's return to the wild. Although their paths had diverged, Luca's impact on Cato's life was undeniable. The story of Cato spread far and wide, capturing the hearts of people around the world. It is a testament to the power of compassion, resilience, and the tireless dedication of individuals like Luca and the sanctuary staff.